uh, your window of opportunity. This is part four. Glad you're here today, but everybody has a window. Thanks for you to remember before I even get started. Number one, watch and look for your window of opportunity. Look. Look for your window. Everybody's got a window, but watch. Get your God eyes on. Put your God eyes on. Look for your window of opportunity. Number two, don't listen to the voice of fear. Do not listen to that old voice of fear that's going to come knock on your door and it's going to try to scare you to death and stop you from moving in God's, God's anointing. Number three, remember this, it takes faith. Hear what anybody ever tells you? It takes faith to walk on water. It takes faith to step through your window of opportunity. And last, number four, before I get to preach, when it seems like you're in the belly of the whale, Y'all pray until you make the, the well sick. Y'all remember that sermon last week? And you're going to have some dark moments. You're going to hear a lot of, lot of voices. You're going you're to be in a place like you may have never been before. And there's going to be a lot of people saying, ah, who you think you are? And ah, you can't do it. But I'm telling you, if you'll pray until when the, until the well gets sick, you know what the next step is? He'll spit you out on your island of destiny. And I, I prophesy that today in Jesus' name. Ever who's in the belly of the well right now, rise up and keep praying because prayer is what moves things. Prayer is what changes things. And if you've got a good prayer life, you're going to make it in Jesus' name. If you have your Bible, won't you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 through 33. Two windows we're going to talk about today in our last sermon. It's the last sermon on, on your window of opportunity. Window number one is called the window of a provision. Everybody say the window of provision. Come on, the window of provision. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 through 33. Man, I'm so glad you guys are here. I love, absolutely love worshiping with you. And there's just a sweet, sweet spirit in this church today. And I want to say thank you for bringing your worship to church with you. Isn't that good? Watch this, verse 31. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The word of God reads like this. The God and the Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, who is to be praised forever, knows that I'm not lying. All of a sudden he goes, God is to be praised, and God knows what I'm getting ready to read to you guys. He, Paul said these words, God knows I'm not lying. God knows I'm not lying. He said these words, in Damascus, the governor, the king of Artis, had the city of Damascus guarded in order to arrest me. They wanted to arrest Paul, and they wanted to arrest Silas, to be honest with you. But they said, if I could find these two men, these two men are turning our city right side up. They're messing it up. They're, they're talking about Jesus, and they wanted to stop the word of God going forward. How many of you know that the word of God will not come back void? If you want a way out, the word of God will get you out. It sure will. He said, i, I got to find this man named Paul. He had the whole city of Damascus on guard that when Paul showed up, he was going to arrest him. Now watch this. Paul says, God knows I'm not lying. Verse 33 reads like this. But I was lowered in a basket from a window. I love this. He's been talking about windows. How many of you know there's windows in heaven? And God says, I want to open the windows of heaven and bless you. God does not want to curse you. God did not, God does not put sickness on his people. Y'all watch this preacher really quick. Sin caused sickness. And you're fighting the devil right now. But watch this. He said, I had some friends that made me a basket. <laughs> he said, they opened the window and they, and they put me in the basket. And watch what he said. And I slipped through the king's hands. Now, I got a word for you about the window provision. The Bible says that they were going to arrest Paul and kill Paul. But Paul said, I've had some friends, made me a special little basket, and watch this. Your Bible don't read like this, but Josephus and all the commentaries reads like this. He said, my friends made me a basket, and they put, they put four cords on the basket, and they started lowering me. They raised the window, and they started lowering me in a basket, down a wall, and I slipped past the king's hands. Now, I, I want to, Paul's friends helped him, and they held Paul by the tensions of the rope. It's a wonderful thing. I wrote this down in my notes, and I want to I, I teach just for a moment. It's a wonderful thing when you have friends that will hold you up. It, it, you are a blessed person if you've got a true friend that will hold the rope. 
while you're in the basket. You're a blessed person it, when you have friends or a church that will hold on when, when the tension's on, when the heat's on, when people are talking about you. It's good to have, I call them rope holders. Rope holders. I appreciate a lot of people in this church this morning. A lot. And I'm going to try not to cry when I do this, but just sometimes the Lord just touches you. Over the years and through the years, we've had a lot of changes at Elkhorn. A lot of changes. Some good, and some's been wonderful, but there has been some tough changes at Elkhorn Baptist Church. And a lot of things have been questionable. Some people say, what is the preacher doing? What's he doing? Has he, has he lost his mind? <laughs> I've heard that before. But I want to tell you something. I've had some precious people at this church to be my rope holders while I was in the basket at this church. And this morning, I want a person to say thank you to all my rope holders. Thank you for loving me while I was in the basket. And thank you for holding the ropes and not letting go when things didn't look too good. And I, I, I just pray today and thank God for my rope holders who opened the window and didn't let go of the rope when I got halfway down. You know what I'm saying? We all need some rope holders in our life. We all need good people in your life that when it gets tough, they won't let go of the rope. Amen? Listen to me. Today, I, I really want to say thank you to my rope holders. See, because most time when tension comes and the heat is on, people will back out. They'll, they'll run away. They'll quit. And they'll stop right when you need them. They'll back out on you. Y'all know I'm preaching good today. When the heat's on in the church, people will back out. But we need people that's going to be some rope holders, hallelujah. That when it gets tough, they'll hang on. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Then when tension's in the church and it don't look too good, we got some rope holders. And I want to go ahead today and just tell you this. We got some hurting churches here in Campbellsville, Kentucky right now. Big B's without being without a pastor for two years. And you know what Elkhorn needs to be? We need to be some rope holders for Big B. Y'all may not like this type of preaching, but I'm going to be honest with you. Living grace is without a pastor. We don't need to be talking about them. We need to be some rope holders, hallelujah, and bless that church and pray a good pastor in that pulpit. God is what changes things, hallelujah. Anybody can talk, but we need some rope holders. We need to pray that God will send a man that will fill those pulpits and bless that congregation and let the Holy Ghost go and let the people go and let God be God and fill that house back up. Grant that, Lord. Big B's not our enemy. Living grace is not our enemy. This is not about Elkhorn. This is a God thing, hallelujah. And it's all about Jesus. And I vote today we bless people instead of cursing people. If you don't like this type of preaching, you've got a problem. It's called jealousy. Woo! Let this white boy go this morning. Hey, hallelujah. You know what? People who's got jealousy in their life, they'll cut the rope when you're halfway down. People who's got jealousy in their life, they'll say, I don't got a rope. People who's got jealousy in their life will talk about a church and talk about people because they're jealous of where those people are at. Now, Corn, y'all listen to this preacher. You write this down. There's going to come a day when you're going to need a rope holder in your life. There's going to come a day you're going to be in a basket and you're going to have a lot of problems in your life. And if you don't have the right people at the other end of that rope, you'll be in a mess. Everybody here today needs a rope holder. And I praise God I'm looking around this congregation today and you know what, man, it's just amazing what God is doing it's just amazing. This house is filled up this morning. People in the back, and they're back on the steps again. And my question to Elkhorn Baptist Church, are you going to be satisfied with one service, two services? I don't care if it takes three, four, five, whatever. Let's make a difference for Jesus. Amen? Somebody give him praise in this house this morning. We're going to be some rope holders, and we're going to hold on when everybody else lets go in this house. We're going to bless churches. Hallelujah. Most people, they let go. We need to hold on to each other. You need rope holders in your life. People are not going to let go when bad and ugly or even in good times. 
You know, it's easy to love people that look like you and act like you and talk like you. But I'm talking about people that gets under your crawl. People that mess you up. Y'all, I'm telling you the truth. Because I'm just like you. I say these words, they deserve it. And y'all say, Brian, what kind of preacher are you? A truthful one. Hope y'all can handle the truth today. Here's the thing. We cannot be jealous. Watch me. We cannot be jealous. If we want to continue to grow, we cannot be jealous. The Bible says jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Jealousy will kill people. It will kill your spirit. It will kill everything about you. I pray today and I prophesy today that you become a rope holder to people that gets under your crawl. Woo, Brian, that's good preach. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Hallelujah. My question to you is this before I go to point number two. Who are you helping through their window of opportunity? Most people, here's what they do. I've been around. I've been pastoring long enough. Here's what they do. They want everybody to do good, but they don't want nobody to do excellent. They want everybody. It's okay to do good, Scott. Just be average to me. Mediocrity. You can be a good, good guitar player, but don't outplay Greg. <laughs> See what I'm saying? And I've dealt with this, church. Watch me. There's been pastors that would walk in this church that's got under the anointing of God. Dr. Steve Ayers, Billy Carroll, Jeff Edwards, and all these pastors that would walk into this church. And I'm not going to lie to you. I sit in front and go, man, I wish I'd have said that. Wish I'd have preached that. And jealousy will start. Uh, jealousy will start rising up in me. But what I found out, God loves me, hallelujah, as much as he loves Billy Carroll and Jeff Edwards and Steve Ayers. And I got a word deep in my heart this morning. I got a word just like they got a word. And what I found out, God's going to do what God wants to do. I'm just glad to be part of the family. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'm just glad this morning to look out there and y'all are smiling and you ain't throwing oranges and lemons and rocks. Hallelujah. Be careful because you live in a glass house on a gravel road yourself. Let me go on. Point number two. Point number two. Y'all got number one. What was number one? Yeah, I'll preach it again. Y'all don't, you know, point number one is the window of provision. God will give you a window. God has given Elkhorn Baptist Church a window like never before. I don't want to go back to 1994 or 5. I don't want to go back to 2001. I believe greater things are ahead from you and I in this church right now. But you've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. And how many of you know, fear's a knocking. Fear's a knocking. You can't do it. You're right, you can't, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You've got to have that spirit in you and let it keep rising up. Number two, the window of decision. One of the most critical windows that I've talked about is going to be the window of decision. Turn the Bible to Acts chapter 20. How many of y'all getting the word today? Y'all are beautiful, man. Y'all are doing great. One more point. We get to go to Lee's famous recipe and eat some chicken. How's that sound? And Dave Newton said, what? I got you, brother. (laughs) Amen. And if you're a Baptist and you don't like chicken, you're really a Methodist. (laughs) I'm joking. (laughs) Acts chapter 20, verse 9 and 10. Here's the deal. Acts chapter 20, verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 reads like this. Seated in a window was a young man. He was sitting in a window. His name was Etitus. Listen to this. Who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on everybody saying on he had brother brian in him you know what i'm saying here's the thing listen y'all think i preach long the bible says in some some translations he preached till midnight so i don't want to hear it's 1205 i got another 12 hours what are you talking about <laughs> I believe y'all would like it, though. That's where y'all are scaring me to death. Here's the deal. 
He was sitting in the window, but he, he fell asleep. He fell asleep as Paul was preaching on and on and on and on. When he was sound asleep. If you've got somebody about you like yet, Titus is sitting beside you. It says, and he fell to the ground from the third story. He was, this was a huge honking church. Big, three levels. He was at the very top, the third level, where the Holy Spirit is God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. He's at the third level where the Spirit still moves, still works. So watch this. If you're in the back, you should be getting what we're getting up here because we got the Holy Ghost in here. He said he fell asleep and he fell from the third story and he was picked up dead. He died. He, he was in the windowsill, sitting on the windowsill. He fell deep asleep. He fell three stories. He fell and blood and everything was everywhere. And all of a sudden he, he died. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. And he said these words. I love this. Don't be alarmed. He said he's alive. He's alive. Listen to me. I feel this in my heart right now. Some of you right now are sitting in the middle of a windowsill. You've got one leg in the church, and you've got one leg in the world. But I'm sitting and telling you today, declaring God, God just don't want you to be half alive or half blessed or half anointed. God wants you to be totally immersed into the presence of Jesus Christ. He wants both legs in the church, not one out and one in. Somebody say amen. Paul preached along, it was midnight. And here's my point I want to give you about the window of decision. Windows are not meant to sit in, they're meant to go through. They're meant to go through. And we got a lot of churches sitting on the halfway point. I'm going to preach this for a moment. We got a lot of churches, a lot of moms, a lot of dads sitting on the windowsill, one, one leg, one foot in the church, and one foot in the world. Can I tell you, you'll never be blessed until both feet get in. Until you're sold out and immersed. That's why baptism, I firmly believe why God, why I put Jesus Christ in the river of Jordan, he just didn't sprinkle him. He just didn't go, whoop, whoop, whoop. He didn't do that. He said, I bury you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He went all the way down, and he come all the way back up. He was a new creature. Hallelujah. God wants all of you. God don't want your Sundays. God wants your Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and your Sundays, and your Sunday nights, and your Wednesday nights. I didn't say that. The boy fell asleep at midnight. According to this, according to the Greek, midnight means the halfway point. I thought that was very interesting. A lot of people in here is at the halfway point. Midnight, according to the Greek, means the halfway point. Or decision time. <laughs> decision time. The Bible also says that Jesus Christ will come back uh, like a thief in the night. Nobody knows when Jesus Christ is going to come back. That's why it's going to be like a thief in the night. You, you cannot say, well, I've been halfway good and get to heaven. That's why he died on a cross. Buried your sins in the deepest part of the ocean. As far as somebody help me preach. As the east is from the west. And I am born again. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm blood covered. And I'm on my way to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. And here's what I wrote down in my notes. Here was the scary part about where this boy was at. He was sitting in the windowsill. One leg was in the church. And one leg was in the world. And here's the scary part about a window. You can stand behind the window and you can be in the house, but you can see the world. Listen to me. It's a deep word, but it's so good. You can be in church and you can feel the Spirit of God. You can be in church and you can tithe. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. You can be in church and go Sunday night, Wednesday night, and put a check mark beside your name. But what this word tells me, he had one foot in and one foot out. And the reason why he fell out is because he was leaning more toward the world than he was inside the church. And I'm telling you, there are people today and there are churches today, the reason why God is not moving in a lot of churches is this. He wants to, but they got the world on their mind. In between the word and the world. Jared, I think you preached this. 
in between the word, W-O-R-D, and world, W-O-R-L-D, is one letter. One letter will keep you from the word. One person will keep you from the, from the word. One situation in church, you get mad about it, and you'll leave, and you'll go out into the world. Here, listen to this preacher just for a moment. If you know somebody who has left the church, it's just a matter of time before they fit into the world. It's the truth. And we got people weighing in the balance. But what we need, I go back to it, it's in my heart and on my spirit. We need some rope holders that will go down where they're at and tie a rope to them if you have to, hallelujah, and drag them to church in the name of the big J-E-S-U-S. Do what you got to do, but be a rope holder and don't cut the rope on them. I feel that in my heart. Don't cut the rope. Be a rope holder. And so many people today, people leave the church, they talk about them, they gossip about them, they have Bible study about them, but they don't, they're not a rope holder. I told Haywood we had a conversation, the first service we was going over, and Haywood told me, he said, I had a friend once told me, he said, I've got the end of the rope, and if you go down, I go with you. And Elkhorn, I tell you today, if we go down, I go with you. We go up, I go with you. And we swim together, sink together, hallelujah. We do it together, amen. We do all this stuff together, not to be the biggest and the brightest church in Camelsville. I ain't worried about being number one. I'm already number one with Jesus. So what I'm trying to tell you today, some of you can be inside the church, but one leg can still be out in the world. And I really believe that's what God gave me on that. Why did this young man, he Titus, why did he, why did he fall from the wind? And number one, he lost his passion for the things of God. Some of you used to be so on fire for God. Some of you used to have a zeal in your life, you know, in your heart. You'll get saved, and man, you'll change the world. But why did he fall out of the window? Because he lost his passion. He lost his zeal. He lost the sight of the cross. And watch me, if you lose sight of the cross, you'll find the world every time and number two he was more out than he was in he was more out than he was in that's what's wrong with christians today they've got one foot in the church and they've got one foot in the world that's a dangerous place to be and watch this i know why people don't come to church i do i know why people have been hurt and they don't want to come to church but i wrote this down i don't come to church for the people i don't come to church i love our singing and I love Greg Ford and this praise band. I, I'll rate them with anybody. They're, they're great. They're anointed. And they, they come riding in on the presence of God every Sunday. We're blessed to go to the well every Sunday. But I don't come for the praise. I don't come for the, for the preaching. I come because my Lord, my God, my Savior, the anointing, the great I am is in this house. And I feel the presence of the Lord. I don't come. And all of us, watch this. Everybody in here is a hypocrite. Everybody in here, I'm telling you, you may not like this type of preaching, but it's true. Everybody one day is going to be in a basket. Moses was a basket case. Y'all will get that later. Everybody here is going to be in a basket one day. And you better hope you've got somebody that will raise your window of opportunity. And say, hey, preacher. Hey, deacon, hey, church member, hey, sister, hey, brother, let me help you get past this old enemy. What really amazed me was this wall was approximately, think about this, this wall was approximately two foot thick. Think about this. His enemy was on the other side of the wall while he was going down the inside of the wall and escaped the hands of the king. So your enemy may be two feet away from you, hallelujah. But God said, I'll slip you through their hands, hallelujah. I'll get you out of the belly of the whale. I'll get you out of the fire. I'll get you out because I am God. I want this to get in y'all's heart. Y'all get the word today? Are y'all really getting this word today? There'll be a window of provision. There'll be a way out. You ought to give your way out, but you've got to use your faith, and you've got to trust your rope holders. The people's going to help you get to your destination. If you don't do that, guys, I'm telling you, there'll be 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 50 years down the line, you'll be still sitting in a blue chair, feeling the presence of God. Oh, you're in, but really you're out. You're never connected. Never connected. Hallelujah. 
See, the world is a miserable place. How many of y'all know that? Watch this. The world is not going to give you peace. You can smoke all the dope you want. And you know what? That high is going to leave you. And you're going to be miserable when you come back to your senses. You can drink all the alcohol you want. I know this is some good old preaching. But let me tell you something. It's got to be preached so y'all be set free. And all you're doing is covering up something in your life that you've been hurt by. But I'm telling you, when I got high on Jesus from the Most High, I never wanted to go back no more. When you get touched by the Lord, man, it takes you places you've never been before. And I'm telling you, there's no alcohol, there's no drug, there's no sex, there's nothing in this world that'll satisfy you like your Jesus will. Amen? Like my God will. He'll bless you. Woo! Hallelujah. I noticed what, what happened in Acts chapter 20, verse 10. I'm praise team, you guys come. The Bible says that Paul, the apostle Paul, went down to where the little boy was at. This was a church service. Paul said, time out. Time out. Somebody just fell three stories. The Bible says that Paul went where that young man was at. He put his arms under him. He picked him up. He held him close, and he said these words, Fear not. He's alive. And my prayer for you here today, some of you may be sitting in a windowsill. Some of you may have one leg in the world and one leg in the church. And if you're not careful, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, but Humpty Dumpty had a great fall too. If you're not careful, you keep messing with the world, I'm telling you, you'll go farther than you thought you would ever go. You'll do things you said you would never do. Don't ever think you're, let's, oh, hallelujah. Don't ever think you're above the reproach of sin. Don't ever think you've arrived. That's why they call him Jesus. And that's why we need more of him. Paul said, don't be alarmed. Don't fear. He's alive. And God spoke into my heart, and I wrote this down. You tell the people, I want to restore them. How many of you have done some things you wish you hadn't have ever done? If your hand's not up, you need to come on the altar. How many of you have said things you said, oh, I wish I'd have never said that? There was no truth in that. There was no truth in that. And what God sent me by this morning to tell you, if you're a guest or whoever you are here today, God loves you. And God wants to restore you. God wants to bless you. God will reach down. I had a picture of this this week, and I wrote it down, and I got to give it to you. I was driving down the road, and I had to pull my old vehicle off the road. Don't God speak to you in the truck? <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't care if it is a Ford, he'll still speak. God would like that one. And here's what i seen, Jamie, and so help me. It was like I was falling. The basket and all, the ropes, I seen the ropes going down, and I was in the basket and falling. And all of a sudden, Brother Jim, I see two big old hands. Whew. Two big old hands. Just like this. I didn't see no body. I didn't see no eyes. I didn't see nothing. But two big old hands get under me just like this. He said, Brian, I'll catch you. I'm your prop man. I'll stand you up. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I got you, boy. I got you. Church, watch me. Here he is. I don't care. Listen, if, here's the proof. You've got one foot in the church right now. Some of you are so concerned about your sin, but it's already been paid for. Now just let God catch you and restore you. Now I believe that's what God wanted me to share with you today. That there's a window of restoration. There's a window of provision. He's going to let you go through it. And when you get through it, you may be in the belly of the well. But I'm telling you, if you'll listen to this preacher... When you make the decision in the belly of the well, I will serve him. Come hell or high waters, I will give him praise. I will not stop on my Jesus. I will not back down. I don't care if five shows up next Sunday. Guess what? I'm going to preach under the same anointing that I've got now because I do it for him and nobody else. you got to want it, church. No matter what, watch this. Matthew 
chapter 25, I'll leave you with this. Matthew chapter 25. I got a spot right there. I just seen that. Anyway, that will be fixed next Sunday. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matthew chapter 25. Say, I'm listening, preacher. Come on. Listening, preacher. Very important. Listen to this. And that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. Listen. Who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Listen to this, Jimmy. The foolish ones took their lamps but they didn't take no oil. Oil in the New Testament, Jimmy, means Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. It's good. Listen, people can say what they want to say, but it takes the Holy Spirit drawing you for your That's salvation. Right. That's exactly right. That's right. You can't save yourself. You're lost and undone. A mess. But five of them did not have the Holy Ghost. They wasn't saved. They didn't have no oil. All represents what? Holy Spirit. Listen. They didn't take no oil along with their lamps. Go on. Next. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. Watch this. And they all became drowsy, lazy, sitting back, not trimming their lamps, not, not feeding the Holy Ghost in their life. And they became drowsy and fell asleep. At what time? What happens at midnight? It's what kind of decision time? Decision time. The cry rang out. God is coming. See, you know it here. But do you know he could come back today? He could come back while we're having church. And oh, what a blessing that would be. God bust us in church. Woo. Here comes what? Here's the bridegroom. And it says, come out and meet him. But here's the sad part. The five people who did not have the oil, which represents the Holy Spirit, they went to hell. And the five wise who had the oil went to heaven. I'm declaring today, the bridegroom is coming. I'm declaring today, if you're in a window seal and you've got one foot in the world and one foot in the church, I'm declaring today you need a heart check. Because here's what I know, that God's coming back. And when he comes back, there's going to be a sound, a mighty sound, a universal horn sound. And if you don't have it right, if you've got one foot in the world, and you don't have the oil of the Holy Ghost, you're going to miss that train, Brother Jim. You say, Brian, I'm in church. Oh, the other boy was too. He was half in and half out. See, you can be in church today and have head knowledge, but not have heart knowledge and still die and go to hell. I told you guys, the most dangerous part is the boy was in, but he could see out. He was in the church, but he was living in the world. And I declare today a heart check.